So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this talk about how we got from a monolithic Airflow instance to a decentralized Airflow environment at Kiwi.com. My name is Filip, and with me is my colleague Stanislav. I lead a team of data platform engineers, and we are providing the tools, the data tools for the whole company. By all rights, I shouldn't be standing here today because the fathers of the idea of decentralization of airflow are Maki and, uh, Maki and Igor. Uh, you may know him, you may know them both, especially our friends from Astronomer and even the community because they've had several uh, pull requests to serve our purpose. They have recently welcomed their newborns to this world, so they are actually fulfilling their fatherly obligations, and so that's why couldn't, they couldn't join us. I'm very confident to speak on their behalf because I was there for the whole process from the beginning, and I know about the decentralization uh, probably almost as much as they do. <laughs> Stano is one of the engineers who implemented the decentralization and co-authored the design of the decentralization at Kiwi.com. Before I proceed to the talk, please raise your hands if you are thinking about implementing data mesh in your organization, you are implementing data mesh, or even just decentralizing. Is there anybody? <laughs> you know, yeah, that was a great talk before us. About perfect, so I hope, I hope we, we can actually share the experience. We feel very proud that we have this unique experience to implement data mesh and using Airflow along the way. And we feel privileged to talk to you about this experience. And if, if you are as excited as we are, please reach us right here at the Airflow, Airflow Summit or reach us via LinkedIn. We are, we are very happy to talk to you about this. So, oh, thank you. So uh, do you know Kiwi.com? Anybody? No? Perfect, perfect, some of you. So we sell air tickets and we, our search engine can find tickets that other search engines cannot find, right? We are pretty unique in the content. Um, we have sharing our knowledge and our DNA and we helped to organize the Euro Python in Prague this year. And we are very big on, on sharing the knowledge and giving back to the community. Let me uh, give you some numbers, we do. So we perform more than 100 million searches daily, resulting in more than 70,000 seats sold per day. We perform more than 2 billion price checks across 95% of the global flight content. You can imagine that these numbers need to be supported by a huge volume of data and various forms and shapes. At some point, our old monolithic world stopped scaling and we needed to change and we need to think how we will improve. In order to better understand the journey with Airflow, let me show you a little timeline. We started with Airflow back in 2016 and it's less than two years after the Airflow was launch, launched. And it was a small project for a couple of engineers and, and nobody cared that much right back then. Uh, however, the organization grew, the data grew, and in 2021, we found ourselves in a situation where the central data team couldn't answer the business questions fast enough. You know, we were not able because the data was so large and, and we didn't have enough capacity. The management was really unhappy. We didn't understand the complexity. Maybe some of you who have the central data team may know the situation that you are actually overwhelmed and you feel like a bottleneck for the organization. So that's why we've decided to switch to the data mesh concept. Yet, in 2021, we are changing the organization towards data mesh. We have the domains teams, but we have this monolithic airflow environment that is uh, serving more than 25 teams, having more than 500 active decks, uh, resulting in uh, 4 million tasks monthly, right? Um, and the infrastructure costs amounts to 20,000 US dollars per month. We needed to do something about that. And it wasn't only the airflow, you know, we had also 
We had also the BigQuery single project for the whole organization. We have a relational database, analytical database that didn't scale at all. <laughs> we reached the limit of the storage on GCP actually. Uh, and we needed to move somewhere. So we said, okay, Airflow at that point was the central, central heart of the data in the organization, right? So why don't we uh, lead the technological change with decentralizing the Airflow? Um, back then we had self-managed airflow and we knew we couldn't handle it. Like the previous talk, which was brilliant, like the, you know, the local development and everything, we faced the very same issues. And <laughs> we, we, we needed a partner for this and then we found Astronomer. <clears throat> we decentralized and we went for many, uh, we have, right now we have about 60 airflow instances and, uh, that's actually thanks to thanks to the astronomer uh, because the you know the connection between the infrastructure and the rest is we, we wouldn't be able to make this with this small team. Um, by doing this, we actually achieve better security, stability, and scalability. Let me illustrate you how this dynamic trio of airflow, astronomer, and GCP allowed us to achieve, you know, the, the abide by these four data mesh principles. First of all, decentralized data ownership. Right now, each of the domain teams have their own GCP project, so their own GCP services, their own Airflow instance, and these two are connected through Astronomer. Stana will tell you about how we do it in a minute. So, Everybody having their own environment means that they are responsible for their data. Uh, there is no interference from other teams, right? This is the beauty of it. Second of all, data as a product. When you have the ability to influence your data, you are the single owner of your data, you can start creating the data product. One single, uh, one uh, very important single uh, point of this uh, data as a product is having data contracts in place. With monitoring from Airflow and GCP, uh, alerting and logging and everything could be put into place and having the actual SLA on your data products, which is, which is great, great, it's amazing, it's enabling the data mesh. Third of all, self-serve data infrastructure. Right now, we achieved the point when we when there's a new team, we can create the whole infrastructure, the whole environment within one day. The one day means the one day work of one of our data platform engineers. From then on, the team is absolutely independent. They could do whatever they want. They, they can alter, they can delete, they can destroy. You know, uh, even the destructive, destructive actions are possible, but they are not influencing anybody else, so they they have everything they want. And last but not least, federated data governance. We provide guardrails. guardrails. We, we tell them what are the principles they should abide to, but how and when they implement it, it's up to them. It's their product, their ownership, and that's the embodiment of data mesh for us. This, this does not only help with the technical intricacies, but it actually enables to have shorter time to value, and that's what actually what business likes to hear, right? That's all. About, that's what's all about. Uh, obviously, yeah, <laughs> we love the idea. We are ex very excited about that. We faced several challenges. Like these are the top ones. First of all, uh, we are all technical people, but there are stakeholders, right? Uh, how do you manage st stakeholders? How do you persuade the management that doing this project of decentralization is actually worth a penny? Um, well, <laughs> infrastructure cost uh, can, can actually lead for the management, the infrastructure cost was, was what led the, the, them to allow us to do this initiative. Uh, we also need to provide some migration plan. We didn't over-engineer upfront, but uh, we had a plan. But then, they, they, then you have another stakeholders, like for example, developers and analysts. Like, why, why would they change their way they are doing the things? It's like, okay, they are used to this, right? We have one great experience. We asked probably 30 of the engineers out of the 200 they are using it. We asked them to join us for an offsite 
the actual offsite where we, for three days we shared the idea of the, uh, the, the decentralized design. We show them how, how they should do it. We, we help them set up the environment. And from then on, they were on board, right? What uh, Viraj said yesterday to me, like, you have to get everybody on the same page. That's exactly what we did. OK, and then there were technical issues. And uh, uh, yeah, we need to have the, the, you know, you suddenly you cannot censor uh, each other's environment because you have different airflows. Uh, we needed to have a, a proper uh, integration design with the GCP. You needed the review from infra, security, developers, even the business stakeholders. <laughs> By noting, I, I, I believe you know the situation, right? So. Stano, please do tell us about how we implemented it. Thank you, Philip. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here and uh, share with you, with you our journey of uh, decentralizing airflow. Now, let's get into technical details and examples. Within our infrastructure, Okta serves a centralized single point of access for airflow deployments, enhancing the overall security and ease of access. Okta is a cloud-based identity and access management platform uh, which manage auto authentication and authorization to various services and applications. With the power of Okta, users can access multiple airflow deployments and perform their design at DAX, all while adhering to the principle of least privilege. Our partnership with Astronomer Managed Platform empowers us to unlock full potential of airflow, uh, enhancing the overall security and uh, providing the great environment for our operations. Now let's delve into how airflow interact with the various resources within our infrastructure. We employ a fine-tuned access control mechanism through IAM provided by Google Cloud Platform. By leveraging IMOs, permissions, and workload identity, we can precisely set up access to the various resources, mitigate unauthorized access, and protect sensitive data. In Kiwi.com, we are following the rule infrastructure as a code. Therefore, all of the objects and permissions are defined in Terraform. One of the key concepts within our infrastructure is workload identity. On one hand, we have a team which has access to the resources such as Cloud SQL database, BigQuery, and Security Manager. On the other hand, we have isolated Airflow instance running in the Kubernetes namespace. How do you grant this Airflow instance access to these various resources without one-by-one -one assignment? Thanks to the workload identity, we can impersonate the team service account on the fly. That's amazing. Now, what if uh, our Airflow instance is being shut down and we need to assign permission, permission to another instance? With the previously described setup, it is straightforward. We can uh, impersonate the team's identity to another Airflow instance and ensure same permission as old Airflow instance. As you can see, this approach highly benefits from maintaining overall flexibility to delete, rebuild, or relocate underlying infrastructure of any given Airflow instance at any time. Now, let's get into a uh, DAG example within our infrastructure. Airflow DAG accesses the data of from uh, source cloud PostgreSQL database using workload identity for authorization. The data is then loaded into GCS bucket, also by the Airflow deck, which use uh, workload identity for authorization. In the end, the Airflow uh, loads the data from GCS bucket to BigQuery which also uses workload identity for authorization. As a result, you can observe that it enables passwordless airflow experience. Here is a snippet of the code, which handles impersonation chain and uh, 
access to the BigQuery. It creates the Big, BigQuery client for interaction with BigQuery, right? As you can see, there is no connection ID used. Instead, we are using the team service account and BigQuery project for impersonation. The next challenge we needed to address was dependency check across all Airflow environments. How can the DAG check the state of the DAG in, an, in another uh, uh, Airflow instance? Because we cannot use uh, external task sensors we need to use the HTTP sensors. With the HTTP sensors, we can uh, check the Airflow API and check the response and verify dependency in this manner. Now I will hand over to Philip. Uh, with, uh, he will continue with challenges and with the future. Thank you, Stana. So we have passport-led experience, and we think that that's great. Uh, obviously, we still feel, feel, uh, feel several challenges. Um, two of them, uh, the two biggest of them, uh, well, you have the infrastructure for so many teams, and the cost is still there. We have the partnership with Astronomer. I see many Astronomer people here. Uh, this is not paid advertisement. <laughs> last last week, uh, last week. Uh, Piotr, who is sitting over there, <laughs> just messaged me on Slack, you know, guys, uh, we are releasing new feature, um, scale to zero, and uh, just by the release, uh, we didn't have to do anything, just by the release, we saved 15% of the infrastructure cost. I think this is amazing. So I think the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. I think the partnership for us with, with Astronomy, with a really uh, uh, third party that we can rely on is, very important. And then the second second biggest challenge we are facing every time, I, I told you that everything is up to the teams. Sometimes we have the idea I know how to limit them and should we limit them? And this is the ongoing discussion. So uh, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, we are solving this all, all the, every day and, and, and I think it will never stop. Uh, what's there for the future? We are very excited about what we achieved. But <laughs> there are a lot of improvements to, to come. Uh, one of the things, uh, well, we are abusing airflow. Uh, we are having high frequency deck, right? Five minutes decks. So having the connection, airflow, and the streaming, uh, streaming technologies, you know, Apache Kafka, Pub, Sub, Databricks, whatever, uh, would actually benefit this data mesh infra infrastructures a lot uh, because Again, data mesh is technology agnostic and, and we shouldn't care what we are using inside, what was the technology. Uh, I believe you are all hungry. <laughs> I will conclude. <laughs> uh, so thanks to the decentralization, we achieve better stability, uh, scalability, and security. What's very important for us right now, we are fully cloud native with our data. We can leverage anything that is released by Google or by any other cloud provider for the matter right away without using password as you heard and, and that's, it's right there, it's great. And last but not least, right now our engineer and our analysts, our business are really together. Uh, they don't have to care about technical intricacies of how, how you are doing the local development, how you are doing the infrastructure, what it will cost me, how, what, it, what will I break, right? Uh, they can just cooperate and cooperate on delivering the value. Again, thank you very much for joining us for this talk. If you are interested in this topic, ask the question and please connect with us. We are very happy to share the knowledge and, and talk about this exciting technological advancements. Thank you very much. I just want to clarify this talk is not sponsored by Astronomer. Some talks are, but this one's not. So any questions? All right. Oh. Um, so right now, um, so you, you use Astronomer. So I just wonder uh, how many teams uh, you know, in your company actually using the self-serve or, or how many teams are actually need to go through the data engineering team to actually use Astronomer? 
Uh, well, so we have about 30 teams that are using, uh, using the astronomers so, and they all have their, in astronomers it's called workspace and within the workspace they have several Airflow instances, right? right. So it's about 30 teams at the moment. I see, I see. So do they, uh, so do they often kind of like, okay, deploy their own DAG or write it on that or, or, or using the astronomer IDE to actually write logic or they have to go through you? Uh, well, nobody goes through us. That, okay. That's the first thing. Uh, first okay. thing. We actually would l like to introduce the uh, astronomer IDE, but we, we talked to astronomer yesterday. Like for us, we we actually don't want to do this this work, right? This okay. is a gr great product, uh, but okay. we, we need to marketing it somehow. And and our engineers, they don't care a lot. Like if 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 we tell them, they will use it, but they do. What they're okay. used to. Okay. Okay. So regarding the airflow part, so what did engineer actually do? Like, if, let's say you use astronomer. So what did the engineer actually focus on? Your uh, company. Yeah. So, so what? Sorry. What engineers? Uh, so what? Uh, so what? The data engineer in your company actually focus on after you actually migrate to you know astronomer because astronomer actually solve a lot of problems for you, right? So yeah. after you use astronomer, what kind of problem you actually solve? Like so, so the the yeah. engineers, the, the data engineers, they are doing just just the decks, right? That they, they, they want to get data from somewhere and get there oh, okay. elsewhere. So so they are just doing the manipulation for data platform. We are providing. We are like oh. we are not like Airflow is just one technology. We are providing I, about. 15, 20 technologies, and we need to have guidelines for everything. So yeah. <laughs> so like basically, astronomer will just like solve a lot of problem for you on Airflow. So you ha spend less time on it, more time exactly. on other things. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Got it. A including, for example, the local uh, local development that was described before. <laughs> okay, so uh, the question that I have is: you mentioned that once you're Data platform team creates the project and the infrastructure for the data product team. The that team can actually you know, manage this instance and do whatever they want. If it's had, you even mentioned that it could break the instance if they yeah. wanted to. So what happens when it breaks? What happens when something happens and then? Uh, yeah. What happens when something breaks and then <laughs> does your team help them or do they have a, a an infrastructure team? In their data product team, how does that work? Uh, yeah, so they don't have their own infrastructure teams, but like the pattern we have, we have three different kind of teams, right? First one is like we are analysts. We want it to work. We won't touch it. We won't break it. Just make it work. So, so that's the first one. The second one is, okay, uh, we want to experiment. Uh, we want your guidelines, and and we are happy to provide guidelines. And the third one is actually yes, we want to break things. We want to do experiments that you never thought of. And uh, for this one, like guys, you have. Absolute autonomy. You can do whatever you want, but you are responsible for uh, for actually repairing it, uh, getting it back. And one more thing, we have astronomer support. If anything breaks, <laughs> just contact them. <laughs> um, so when you were showing up the connection to, like when through the DAGs, when you're doing a federated access, so you don't store the JSON file anywhere for the service accounts? No. So it's just the service account with that particular piece of code and it connects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, it's, uh, like the, the service account that is within the namespace that is created by astronomer and that we don't own this, like it's in the namespace, right? Oh, that, okay. That's, that's just like the a very separated piece of of infrastructure for us. And then we impersonate to this table team service account that has all these uh, accesses defined. Okay. So yeah, I, I know uh, like that's why we haven't spent too much time on this because this is when we first started to uh, think about it, that's not that straightforward concept, right? It's very abstract. Yeah. Where it leads to, you don't have to use passwords. Even during local development, you don't need to provide anything else than your own Google identity. And if you are part of the team, you already, like the local development uh, environment already knows that. It's right there. So yeah, <laughs> it is brilliant. It's hard to explain. It's hard to get your uh, head around it, but it's brilliant because you don't use passwords anymore. <laughs> okay, because we use our own infrastructure. Um, so we're just thinking through how you, how you use just the service account 
without the JSON key. I have one more question. So when you are, um, let's say you, you have multiple instances of Adflow for different teams, now you want to deploy a new package on, a, on, on Adflow or Python package, for example. One team wants it, other team doesn't. Do you maintain separate in, like repositories for every Adflow instance or? Uh, so we have the default default packages installed by Astronomer, or like the, the default ones. And then whatever you want to add, you still like every team has still its own Docker Docker uh, file, okay. right? So if and and the requirements file and everything in the repository. So if you want to do anything special and our teams want to do <laughs> very, very special things, uh, they can, they can, we don't interfere. And they install it just into their, uh, just into their uh, repository, uh, their Airflow instance, sorry. Okay. So after the Docker image, is there like a single Helm repo that deploys the Docker image to the instance or? No, no, no. Uh, we have Astro. <laughs> 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 now, like we have, like they, they, yeah, they, they, ha they do their own tricks. That, that's, that's okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you.